Hello, fellow historians. I'm studying for a history of science test, so you're going to get a special edition of Hectic History today. We're going to have a look at three things in history that scientists got oh so wrong. Thankfully, we rectified our wrongs somewhere along the way, but here are some of the fun mistakes we had to make to get here. First, let's talk about the universe. Very broad, I know. But back in the day, there were some pretty wonky ideas about the universe. Aristotle, back in ancient Athens, 300 BC, thought that the universe was... weird. He thought that the Earth was at the center of the universe, and that each planet's orbit was a crystalline sphere, so basically the universe is a set of glass spheres, one around the other. Then one day, two things shattered those metaphorical spheres. First, Copernicus came along and proposed the heliocentric system, with the Sun at the center of the universe, published in his book in 1543. Great year for books, 1543, but we'll talk about that another time. Then in 1577, Tycho Brahe, a famous astronomer, observed a comet. By measuring the parallax of that comet, basically triangulating where it is in the universe, he noticed that it crossed the orbit of Mars. If a comet could cross between orbits, there couldn't be a glass sphere between them, so bye-bye glass spheres. And yes, I said 1577, it took us 1800 years to prove Aristotle wrong. What a guy. Second science fail is something called phlogiston, or phlogiston. By the way, I'm totally pronouncing that wrong, just ignore my pronunciation. Phlogiston was considered to be an essential element of matter. What? You don't know what it is? That's because it's wrong. But it dominated early chemistry in the 1700s. George Stahl noticed that when you heat up a metal, some gas is given off. He wanted to figure out what that gas was, but it hadn't been named or really discovered yet. The problem arose when he started to say that the phlogiston was the true nature of the metal. You would think that if the true nature of the element left, what was left over, what he called the calx, would be lighter than what was originally there. The metal that was left over, the calx, was actually heavier than it started. We know now that's because the CO2 leaves, but he didn't. So how did he solve that problem? Give up the phlogiston? Never! Instead, he decided that phlogiston had a negative weight, a negative mass, which kind of makes no sense. Anyways, we eventually identified gases as elements, uh, starting with Antoine Lavoisier in the late 1700s. But phlogiston really dominated chemistry, and a lot of people would try to justify all of their theories through phlogiston. Now, I still think negative weight is cool, even though it might give a few girls some body weight issues. Anyways, one last fail of the day. Let's talk about light, the amazing thing that allows us to see it. The really weird thing about light in the context of history is that there were two really popular views of light, and both of them made a lot of sense, and both of them turned out to be wrong. First was Isaac Newton. He believed that light was a particle, like a particle of anything else. That way, it could observe his three laws like any other matter did. The prism experiment he did in his own home, where light split up into different colors, solidified that for him. His opponent, Robert Hooke, believed that light was a wave. As a wave, it obeyed slightly different laws of refraction and reflection and laws of movement. Now, Newton hated Hooke, and we all know who won that one. History is written by the victor. When Hooke, the first president of the Royal Society, dies in 1703, Isaac Newton gets the position. Shortly thereafter, Hooke's portrait in the Royal Society disappears. What a nice guy Newton was. Anyways, we eventually figure out, courtesy of Albert Einstein and a few others, that light is neither a wave nor a particle, it's actually both. But that's a science thing that I don't want to get into. Alright, so there are three historical scientific fails. My words of wisdom for you. See you next time.